Hi everyone, this is a short video tutorial on the interactive results of genetic clustering project of cardiometabolic outcomes. On the home page of Common Metabolic Disease Knowledge Portal, you can click on the KP Labs tab on the top right, and it will show you the drop down menu of genetic loci clustering. Since we published our initial type 2 diabetes clustering results in 2018, we'll go to 2018 clustering data first. If you click on the blue button, view 2018 clustering data, it shows our published results in 2018. We'll click on the view research method tab to view the research method first. This tab shows you um, the variant and trace selection process as well as the Bayesian non-negative matrix vectorization clustering method. We use 94 variants that were manually se selected from published studies and 47 relevant traits with publicly available GWAS data sets. For the 94 variants and 47 traits, a variant by trait association matrix was generated as an input for the BNMF clustering. BNMF clustering is a soft clustering method that factorizes the input matrix into two matrices, which are K clusters of variants and K clusters of traits with, it, with an optimal number of K. This method allows variants and traits belong to more than one clusters, which reflects the biological mechanisms where genetic variants and traits involve in multiple pathways. Next, we'll click on the view data to view the published 2018 clustering results of type 2 diabetes. If you click on the blue button features next to the cluster name, it shows you the top traits and loci in each cluster. For example, this beta cell cluster has increased corrected insulin response in this position index as the strongest weighted traits and MTN R1B, CDKAL1, C2CD4A as the strongest weighted loci. If you click on the features button next to the other clusters, you can see the top weighted traits and loci for other clusters as well. Now we'll go to view 2021 clustering data by clicking this blue button. So we have updated previous 2018 results and have a manuscript in process. We have developed a pipeline to perform genetic clustering and have applied it to type two diabetes, coronary artery disease and chronic kidney disease. Here, we can again go to the View Research Method tab to first take a look at the updated research method for 2021 clustering data. Here, automated high throughput pipeline for pre-processing variants and traits is added to efficiently generating input matrix for BNMF clustering analysis. As you can see in this page, an overview of pre-processing steps for variants and traits are illustrated in figure one and figure two as a format of flowchart. For variant selection, we first gathered multiple GWAS summer statistic data sets deposited in the Common Metabolic Disease Knowledge Portal. We required the GWAS to have sample sizes larger than 10,000 in order to reduce false positives and focus on studies with populations of predominantly European ancestry in order to minimize heterogeneity across studies. Then we extracted variants reaching genome-wide significance and then ensured variant signals in the largest GWAS study with a Bonferroni p-value. Next, the pipeline finds proxy variants for multi-allelic ATGC variants or variants with low trait GWAS representation. And then this set of variants is LD pruned and the resulting SNPs are aligned to the risk alleles for the outcome of interest. So type 2 diabetes, coronary artery disease, and chronic kidney disease, depending on the analysis, in the largest available GWAS. For the trace selection, we utilize summer statistics available for GWAS of glycemic traits, anthropometric traits, vital signs, and additional labs in the Common Metabolic Disease Knowledge Portal, as well as in the UK Biobank. We restrict it to GWAS with a sample size limit of 5,000. And traits were used only if the minimum p-value across the final set of variants was less than a Bonferroni p-value cutoff, so that all traits included in the clustering analysis had robust associations with at least one genetic variant included in the analysis. The traits were then filtered by correlation to reduce redundancy. 
For the selected set of variants and traits, the pipeline generates a matrix of standardized effect sizes for variant trait associations as an input matrix for the BNMF clustering. The BNMF clustering is then performed on the variant trait association matrix to cluster variants by their pattern of trait associations. Now, if we click on the view data tab to go back to our newest 2021 clustering data, we can see the top weighted traits and loci for each cluster by clicking the features button next to the cluster name. So here, red bars show negative or reduced traits and the blue bars show positive or increased traits. The green bars represent the weights for the loci. You can explore the other conditions like coronary artery disease, chronic kidney disease, and then combined, which is T2D, CAD, and CKD combined by clicking one of the blue text next to the featured disease text. As described in the blue text above, the results shown here are based on the clustering analysis of 336 T2D loci, 222 CAD loci, 71 CKD loci, and related traits. Now we'll go to the epigenomic enrichment results by clicking View 2021 Epigenomic Enrichment button below the feature disease text. Here, epigenomic enrichment for the genetic clusters of type 2 diabetes is shown in a heat map. As you can see in the legend, effect sizes are shown by the color shades and the p-values are shown with the size of the dots in each cell. For example, beta cell 1, beta cell 2, and pro-insulin clusters are enriched in the enhancers and promoters in islets. The two beta cell clusters and the producer-free cluster are enriched in adipose tissue, and liver lipid cluster and ALP negative cluster are enriched in the liver tissue. You can also explore epigenomics results for other conditions as well by clicking the disease condition. This was a quick tutorial for the genetic loci clustering section of the Common Metabolic Disease Knowledge Portal. Thank you.